so um, just make this as informal as possible. But uh, I really appreciate you all taking your time to come here and uh, be here with me. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I um, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I started a, a construction business in Albuquerque in 1974 as a one-person handyman, uh, me. Uh, and in 1994, I uh, actually had a thousand employees, uh, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, pipe fitting. Uh, I sold that business in 1994. Uh, nobody lost their job and business is doing better than ever. Uh, I view my venture into uh, politics as entrepreneurial. Uh, I've never been involved in politics prior to running for governor of New Mexico. Uh, the Republican Party said that uh, we like you, we like what you've got to say, but you need to know that you'll never get elected, that it's not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected. And, and I did get elected, and I like to think I got elected based on what it was I said I was going to do, which was that everything was going to be a cost-benefit analysis that it was going to be best product, best service, lowest price, that it was going to be about issues first and politics last. And I'd like to think I got re-elected on the basis of way over delivering on that first set of promises. Uh, New Mexico is two to one Democrat. Uh, I think there were three things that I was known for uh, nationally. Uh, one was I, I vetoed 750 bills while I was governor of New Mexico. I had thousands of line item vetoes. I like to point out that by stopping all of that spending, uh, by saying no to, uh, uh, to spending that really benefited uh, individuals or corporations or groups that were well connected politically, I said no to that kind of spending, uh, believing that, that everyone should benefit from what it is that government should do, not just a few. So by saying no to all that spending, by vetoing all that bills, in a, by vetoing all those bills, in a state that's two to one Democrat, you would think that I would have gotten the boot, when in fact I won re-election by a greater margin in a state that was two to one uh, Democrat. I'd like to think on the basis of really being a good steward of uh, tax dollars. Uh, when were you first elected? Uh, so 1995 through 2002 was when I served. Um, I also uh, was known nationally, I think, for being more outspoken than any governor in the country regarding school choice. Uh, I really believe in free markets. I really believe uh, that by bringing competition to public education that it would improve public education. So for six straight years I proposed that every single student in New Mexico get a school voucher, which I thought would have brought about competition to public education. Didn't go anywhere, but I did it. Uh, opinion in New Mexico went from 65% of New Mexicans opposed to school vouchers when I started the <coughs> whole uh, debate discussion. Uh, when I left office, 52% of New Mexicans supported school vouchers, so really a big movement on the issue. Uh, the last thing that I think I was known for nationally was, was I, I, from a, everything for me was a cost-benefit analysis, everything. What are we spending and what are we getting? So I really wanted to take a hard look at the war on drugs, uh, and I came at it from the perspective that half of what we spend on the courts, uh, the prisons, uh, and law enforcement is drug related. So I wanted to take a hard look at the war on drugs and I wanted to include legalization as a potential alternative. I had no idea uh, the compelling argument that existed for legalizing uh, drugs. Uh, so after looking at the issue for a fairly short amount of time, I came to the conclusion that 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related not use related, and that's not to discount the problems with use and abuse, uh, but that ought to be the focus. So in 1999, I advocated the legalization of marijuana, and when you say legalize marijuana, it's never going to be legal to smoke pot, become impaired, do harm to others, get behind the wheel of a car. It's never going to be legal for kids to smoke pot. Um, but smoking pot confines your own home, doing no harm to anyone, arguably other than yourself. Should that be criminal? 
Uh, no. Uh, with regard to all the other drugs, um, I advocate harm reduction strategies, which basically is reducing death, disease, crime, corruption, the things we really care about. Um, I think that we should look at all the other drugs from the standpoint of it being a health issue rather than a criminal justice issue. I got out of office in January 1 of uh, 2003. I was term limited. I'm a firm believer in term limits. I think we're all well served by politicians that don't hang around in office. Uh, that politicians do good things as a result of being limited. They do good things for citizens as opposed to good things for themselves to get reelected in jobs that they really like. Um, and so I didn't want to have a say in what was happening in national politics. I didn't want to have a say in what was happening in New Mexico politics. I just didn't think it was my place. I had my shot. I really thought I made the most of that shot. But about 14 months ago, I just find myself outraged over the fact that uh, this country is bankrupt and that uh, 43 cents out of every dollar that we're currently spending is borrowed. I think that we need to really slash government spending. Uh, we need to uh, decrease taxes. As governor of New Mexico, not one single tax went up while I was governor of New Mexico. Uh, as you know, we've got, what, uh, $10 trillion national debt. Uh, we have $100 trillion in unfunded entitlement liability. I'll also tell you that as governor of New Mexico, I didn't add one cent to the entitlement liability of, of, of uh, New Mexico. Um, so we're bankrupt, we need to slash spending, we need to cut taxes, and of course the reality is, is that spending's going up and taxes are going up across the board. I'm a believer in free markets. Um, I think uh, when it can't, comes to schools, that uh, school choice would be educational entrepreneurs bringing a better product, a better service at a lower price uh, to bear. When it comes to health care, I think the government could have done a lot to eliminate impediments uh, for health care entrepreneurs to enter into that space to deliver a better product, a better service at a lower price. And by the way, I have no illusions that there's anything free market about our health care system. I don't think there could be a system more removed from the free market than what currently exists. I got stitches in Taos last winter. I cut my head. I got about six stitches and it was $750. Now, um, I gotta tell you, I, I, I think advertised, government could blow the lid off of supply when it comes to healthcare. Um, letting healthcare entrepreneurs into the space. But I gotta tell you, there's no advertised pricing for healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe if there were advertised pricing for healthcare that uh, there would be clinics that would offer stitches at maybe $10 a stitch that would be done by a, a physician's assistant. Cash. Um, cash. Imagine a stitch in time would save nine. Yeah, I was just thinking the advertising for the possibilities. I'd have put a band-aid, I'd have put a band-aid over my cut, and I'd have driven down to Albuquerque to get the $75 worth of stitches as opposed to $750. I'm just guessing at what the free market might bring about if allowed a, really a free reign. I view what's happened in, uh, in the healthcare area with uh, health insurance as having grocery insurance. Why doesn't the government issue grocery insurance where when we go to the store, we have grocery insurance. We don't have to pay for our groceries because they cost so much. We don't have to pay for groceries. We have grocery insurance. Well, I guess number, food stamps. number one, <laughs> would, you, would you buy ground round? Well, no, you'd buy fillets because you're not paying for it. Grocery insurance is paying for it. And of course, when you went to the checkout stand, uh, what would the price of that be? Well, the store owner has jacked the price up so high because nobody pays for their groceries. Grocery insurance pays for it. I, I think that's what we've got right now.